When you uh you first met AI, he told you this is the motherfucker that was drafted to replace me. Yeah. And he immediately <laughs> embraced you. Yeah. Aside from what you learned from him on the court, what's some of the things that AI taught you just on being a pro? Man, I watched dude fight through uh so much adversity, man. Like he was a trailblazer, right? Mm -hmm. He He's the first one to do the tattoos. He's the first person to do the cornrows. He's the first person to be a part of hip hop culture. He's the first person, you know, to do the big gaudy jewelry with the diamonds and all of that. Like mm -hmm. he was, he's a pop culture icon and a basketball player, bro. So I just watched him take a lot of criticism and go out and go get 30s and 40s and put a team on his back at six feet, mm -hmm. 175 pounds, dealing with broken bones and injuries. And he gave, everything he had every night. Mm -hmm. Like that put that put that toughness in me like, bro, if you can lace up, you are gonna play in the game, bro. You are gonna go out there and give it your all. And I think that was one of the most valuable lessons that I learned from him, him just going out there and giving the city of Philadelphia everything he had. Mm -hmm. What year was that when you was drafted? What year was he? Man, 05, so he had to be- Seven, eight a, years? Probably nine or ten. I think okay. he was ninety six, if I'm not mistaken. Right, right, right. Yep. yep. Yeah, I, th I think he was. I think he's yep. ninety six. So yeah, probably like year nine, year ten, like his prime. Yeah, bro. yeah. That's... I was with him in the in the height, like you know how we pull up at hotels, bro, two three o'clock in the morning, mm -hmm. and it might be a handful of fans out there that want an autograph or a picture or something. Mind you, I play with Bean. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when you pull up with AI, it's pandemonium out the hotel. But I'm talking about women. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Women, bro. It's unreal. That whole thing when people say like, yo, when y'all get to the hotel, it's groupies in the lobby. I thought that was a real thing because I was with the one rock star yeah. that it was. But I've played with a lot of rock stars. That is not the it's reality. Not like they that. not yeah. in there. <laughs> they not there at all. But for him, that was the... <laughs> That was the experience, bro. Real rock star, dog. Oh, I had wanted his the mama answer, huh? hey, I had him. They wanted on the, the answer. Bench. On the yeah. bench. He had his mama braid his hair. <laughs> and I bench. played with him twice. I played with him twice. And it's it's kind of crazy how our our relationships and our careers intertwine because by the time he got traded, I was coming into my own. I was averaging 25 and 5 or something in that, in that area, and I broke my jaw. Mm -hmm. Um Anton Jameson broke my jaw on a, on a loose ball. They said I had to have my jaw wired shut for eight weeks. They called me um, early on in my recovery process. They was like, yo, we thinking about bringing AI back, um, you know, to fill that, fill that void. Um, what do you think about it? I was excited. I was like, hell yeah, mm -hmm. like bring my man back. I was excited to do that. Mm -hmm. And then once I got healthy again, they, was, they called me in the office was like, yeah, um, you're gonna come off the bench, AI is gonna start because we don't think it'll be healthy for him mentally going forward, coming off the bench. So he's gonna be the starter. <laughs> like obviously that's AI and I'm cool with him starting, but it was like, damn, I was right. I was peaking up right. and shit. I, I've been coming off the bench ever since that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And so how my career ended up getting solidified in a way where I become the underground and the six man and all of these other things, a lot of that, that part of my history has still is tied to AI. Yeah. Because, I mean, that takes a lot. All right, so you left Toronto, you go to Lakers. We already talked about how AI embraced you. What was that moment like when you get to the Lakers? You get that same love, that same embrace from Kobe when you first get there? It was different. He wasn't really around when I first when I first got there. I think he was dealing with, um, I think his shoulder at that time. Yeah, he was having surgery. A, he was having a shoulder uh, issue. Mm -hmm. And so when I first got there, it was kind of weird because he, he wasn't around. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And so I, I was playing with my peers and then he got healthy and, it, and then everything changed. Yeah. Like the environment changed. <laughs> I feel like the air changed, the lights changed. Like he just came in and it was like, all right, order in the court. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It was, it was completely different. But playing with Bean for, for two and a half years was, was special to me, man. And just getting to know him as a person, getting to know what kind of dude he was, that was, that was a special experience for me. And we had one of our uh, family cast members on the show, not too long, what, first season, Julius Randle? Yeah. And uh, he affectionately said that Kobe Bryant is an asshole. He was hard on them young you boys. Know? Yeah. Was it just everybody in general, or just the young guys got it the worst? It was just the young guys. It was just <laughs> the young guys. I, I, I was bulletproof. Brandon Bass was bulletproof. <laughs> Metal World was bulletproof. Yeah. 
Uh, about Swaggy P. Nick, he yeah. always on he the fence. Like yeah. Because, you know, Nick, you know, he poked the bear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know yeah, what I'm yeah. saying? Nick right, always right. poking the bear. So, you know, Cole would say something to Nick every once in a while. But honestly, man, he was hard as hell on them young guys. What's some of your uh, favorite Kobe stories? Man, I tell his story all the time. I just What's remember. What's something you ain't shared, though? <laughs> now, some, some, of I gotta, some, some I got to keep in my pocket, man. Yeah. But I just remember him telling the young guys, when I'm in the front office next year, I'm trading all you motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> <I> just, <laughs> I'm trading all you motherfuckers. But he told them, he said, well, next year when I'm in, the, when I'm in the front office, I'm trading all you motherfuckers. <laughs> And we got back to LA that next day, bro, and the equipment manager was just coming around with a big ass bucket, just <laughs> scooping Kobe's out of everybody's locker. Damn. And me and Nick, like, what you doing? He said, Kobe think y'all niggas soft, man. He don't want y'all wearing his shoes. <laughs> oh my gosh. Did you ever try to like give those young guys like some encouragement? Like, yo, he's just being hard on you. Like, or were you just Hell like, let no. me stay away? I wasn't getting in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't getting in the middle of that. That's Kobe, Kobe Bryant. Yeah, sure. I was I was a soldier. Yeah. Like, you know, I was a soldier. Who was going back at him though? Like, cause I can see, I can see out of all of it, Nick being a dude that's just like, you know what? I'm a, I'm a nah, challenge code. No, nah, it was it was it was a weird environment because he started that season off like locked in. He was in black mamba mode and I think his body was failing him. Mm -hmm. And mm. I think he he took his foot off the gas after that and then that's when it became about, you know, the uh, what they call it shit the uh the, what they call uh, it the, the retirement uh the the, oh, yeah, the, like uh, the yeah yeah. Yeah, the, the farewell tour. Farewell, farewell tour. Farewell tour. Yeah, because he started, remember, he said this publicly. They was like, is this a farewell tour? He was like, fuck no. <laughs> nah, nah, nah. And then 10 games in, it became a ceremony. And so I just think that shifted the direction of his mindset and what he was, what he felt like he was trying to, trying to do at that point. I think he was just trying to feel the love and get celebrated and try to get out of there in one piece because his body was, wasn't holding up. Mm -hmm. You know, his Achilles, his shoulder, and everything just wasn't giving him what he needed. Mm -hmm. Damn. That had to be pretty fun though. Watch him. Uh... You know what, bro? I hate to say this, but it was like playing for the Harlem Globetrotters, bro. We just yeah. showed up and hooped and went to the next city. <laughs> yeah, like, what do you, you know do? What I'm it's gotta be like, a different. It wasn't... That was the story that was told to me. That like you just didn't know when he was gonna come. If we he was didn't know. Play. We start we start realizing because he had his own he had his own crew of trainers or whatever to get mm -hmm. him get him prepared, so he would have his own kind of locker room, so to speak. So the only way we would, we would kind of know if he was going to play is if they came in the locker room and took all of his stuff out of the locker. If, mm -hmm. if they came in and we came in and his locker was empty, he was in the building. Mm -hmm. They put it yeah. In the, yeah, Elvis was in the building. Yeah. That's how we knew <laughs> that he'll be playing that night. Or like you just start paying attention. It's like, all right, we play LeBron twice. He's going to play in the second one. Yeah. Or, you know, we play Steph at home or when we go to the East Coast, he's going to play in all the East Coast games because we only come once. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So we start figuring out like little tendencies, like when we knew he <laughs> would play because he wasn't practicing at all. Yeah. At, that, at that point, he wasn't practicing at all. We literally were just showing up and hooping. We were practicing, but he, <laughs> he wasn't. Was. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And so it was, it was an interesting dynamic, but cool as hell to experience and, and, and do that with him. Yeah. What I love most about it too is like he still didn't duck the smoke. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, cause I was, you know, that being the last year for him when he came to Indiana. Obviously, I played him when we were in LA, but when he came to Indiana, he missed some games. So from a fan of it, I was like, damn, I hope like he's suiting up for this one. Like yeah. it's my last chance to play him. He coming to the city. Like, I hope <laughs> I get that opportunity. Sure enough, he 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 comes and, and he's ready to play. So I was like, cool. But yeah. just watching them all the games, it was always against like, you know. Dog, one of the dopest those, things. Those I them cats. I'm sorry to cut you off, brother. No, no. <laughs> but good. we down a Kobe rabbit hole now, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I'm sure you got some dope ass stories and experiences with Bean as well, mm -hmm. man. But I just remember his very last game that he scored 60, man. He was so gracious to everybody, bro. And I'm mm -hmm. I'm I'm glad that was my last um my last memory of him, man. He was so gracious with everybody. It was stuff literally stacked up to the ceiling that security wanted signed people that worked in the arena um man equipment people and people's families and friends mm -hmm. and everybody just wanted something a piece of memorabilia from them and i'm telling you jackie it literally was stuff stacked to the ceiling like piles of stuff 
and he sat there gracefully signed and signed every Damn. single piece wow. of everything for everybody, like personalized. My mom got a pair of shoes personalized to her. Wow. I got a jersey. Yeah. I got a jersey for my cousin. Everybody's stuff personalized. Like he really took his time and showed and showed that appreciation. I'm glad that was like that was the last time I seen yeah. him. Bro. You gotta tell him your story, P. What? But Kobe, what he what he did for you when you when you asked him a question. It was a moment where, you know, I was we was playing against Portland in in the playoffs and I was having trouble. I had just had my shoulders, like my shoulders was fucked up. Just got a shot to play in the, in the, in that playoff series. So I'm like, shit, I need some help. I'm getting double teamed. Like, I don't know, like I'm I ain't played ball in like two weeks leading up to this. So I just sent Kobe a text, like, yo, I'm having trouble with A, B, and C. He hit me back that next ultimately that next morning a whole paragraph breakdown of like when you know this player do this do that when the help come look for this like it was just so in depth like detailed mm -hmm. out and it's crazy this was before the detail shit started to to right to formulate and, and he already was a step ahead of that just breaking you know film down it's fire man i had a had yeah. that type of relationship with him I I, had, I always had his number and never had the heart to text him, bro. Yeah, I just never had the That's heart. That's one regret I do have, cause I had his just number for a minute. Just pouring more into that yeah. relationship. Yeah, I had his number for a minute, and this was before like I got really close with him, cause I ain't gonna lie, like hearing about how intense his workout was, hear about like the times he worked out, I was always like a little like fuck, like I don't, I don't know if like I I could do it, you know yeah. what I mean? So I was always afraid to like really like yo. Low code. Like like, can I come it, work yeah. out with you? Like type shit. And that's the biggest regret I have of not utilizing that time when yeah. I had the chance. You know, we play, you know, we play cards. So we sitting at the table. He sat behind us to the right <clears throat> on the window. And you know, I, I don't like flying. You know, P, P can attest to this. I don't yeah. like I don't <laughs> like flying. So I'm gonna keep me a little tequila yeah. in my bag, you know, <laughs> keep the nerves down a little bit. You know, I'm I'm the guy to come to if you want a little <laughs> little nightcap, you know what I'm saying, to get you on home. And so, you know, I always used to be gambling. I just feel this little little rib crack every once in a while I look down, it just be a cup. I just <laughs> I just pull my dog a little something and he go back to reading his book or whatever. You know what I'm saying? But I supplied Kobe with the tequila. You know what I'm saying? Oh, that's the best. Yeah. Oh, man, I love that. Lou got to come out with a Kobe tequila. <laughs> Lou, so you got to play with AI and Kobe. What kind of similarities did they have, um, in your opinion, that made them generational talents? They never thought they was going to lose mm. at nothing. That's one of the things that I, I, I've drawn from both of them. Like, arrogant level, never going to lose. Mm -hmm. Like I don't give a fuck. What you talking about? I ain't losing. Mm -hmm. I'm not losing. Like both of them had that that arrogance that that was needed to be who they you know who they turned out to be the Hall of Famers that they are. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They just never felt like they were there was anybody better than them. And when they faced off, you saw some some epic duels. I wish I wish you know even though I like that Sixers team, I wish my boy had more star power on the Sixers when they went against right. the Lakers. That that would have been an <laughs> epic battle. You right. know what I'm saying? Right. I think because of that, like, I feel like because of that, it separated, like, who AI actually was mm -hmm. to go up against Shaq, go up against Kobe, and still hold his own. Mm -hmm. Just getting to the finals, period, the teams that he knocked off on that on that way to get to the finals. Yeah, they had a perfect, they had a perfectly made team for him. For him, they yeah. Four guys that was gonna defend, right? You know, knock down open shots and make sure he get open for open shots. Right. And they had a perfect group for that. Right. Wow. And he gonna get the points. <laughs> yeah, he yeah. gonna do that. Look, the NBA season is here, and Prize Picks has got you covered when it comes to making some money. Prize Picks is a daily fantasy app, and with the new NBA season here, you can select two or more players, pick more or less on their projected stats, and you can turn $25 into $250. Prize picks is really simple to play. I can make my picks and submit my entry in less than 60 seconds. Prize picks allows you to pick combo projections across all sports with specials so you can support all your teams while still cashing in. Be sure to visit prizepicks.com slash podcastp and use code podcastp for a first deposit matchup to $100. Cha-ching! 